here after tonight. Still to come, of course, we've got much, much more. Gary Russell Jr. taking on Vasily Lomachenko. And later our main event, Robert Guerrero taking on Yoshihiro Kamagai. Looking ahead a bit now, Saturday, July 12th, we'll be back in Las Vegas. It's being billed as honor and glory. Canelo Alvarez returns to the ring against Arislandi Lara. It's one versus two at 154 pounds. Our All Access team is already in place. Episode one of All Access, Canelo Lara, premieres on Friday, June 27th. Here's a quick preview. It's for honor and glory. Por eso es más que cualquier título. Hola, mi amor. Hola. Tengo más corazón que el canal. Just three weeks away, Saturday, July 12th, Canelo Alvarez, Eris Landi Lara. Canelo coming off that excellent performance against Alfredo Angulo. Lara off that convincing win over Austin Trout. Real deep card as well. Two matchups featuring Mexico versus Puerto Rico, Abnamaras versus Jonathan Akendo, Juan Manuel Lopez taking on Francisco Vargas, and in the opener, Johan Perez versus Mauricio Herrera. Herrera is off his outstanding outing against Danny Garcia, where some had him winning that fight against the junior welterweight champion of the world. That's Saturday, July 12th on Showtime pay-per-view. All right, our next fight, a fascinating matchup. Gary Russell Jr. taking a big step up. Russell, a two-time national champion, U.S. Olympian, very good credentials. But Vasily Lomachenko is a two-time amateur world champion, two-time Olympic gold medalist, and winner of the Val Barker Trophy for the most outstanding fighter in the Olympic tournament. Perhaps this is the best amateur in the history of boxing. So fight fans wanted to see Russell step up, and that step comes tonight. Let's hear where his passion and foundation was formed in his own words. My name is Gary Russell Jr. and I'm from Washington, D.C. I grew up with both my mom and dad, a lot of siblings. Uh, I'm the oldest of six boys. We always fighting for the attention and everything. Three brothers that actually competed boxing with me. I had a brother that was actually older than me, uh, Davon, and he passed away for his time. I uh, kind of wish he was here with us now, but unfortunately he isn't. I live for him. But um, just a civil rivalry, man, it, it, it pushed me to, to be the fighter that I am today. And I started boxing when I was seven years old. I lost my very first fight. I thought I actually won. I knocked the kid down and everything. But I lost my first fight. Unfortunately, because I was competing so much, I, I was missing out in school, so we actually had to get tutors and stuff like that to actually help out and step in. In the interim of that, I, I became the 2004 Junior Olympic gold medalist, 2005 Athlete of the Year, 2005 Bronze Medalist in the World Championship, 2005 Golden Gloves, 2005 U.S. Championships, 2006 uh, U.S. Championships, 2007 U.S. Championships, <laughs> the list goes on and on. Once I got out of high school, I, at this point I've won my right to compete in the Olympic trials. I made the Olympic team, we're in Beijing. I'm 100% excited. I was one of the favorites to medal, but I grew extremely ill, extremely sick, and unfortunately, my illness stopped me from being able to compete in the Olympics extreme blow. I felt like at that point, my entire career, everything that I worked for went completely down the strain. I felt as though that I let my fans down. Till this day, that still, it still bothers me. Me turning professional, I felt as though that it was my opportunity to let my fans know that the support and love that you gave me was not in vain. I will make it up to you by becoming a world champion. My motivation comes from my family. My drive comes from you know, my family, uh, I give a lot of the credit to my dad. You know, I told him he's actually my favorite superhero. If I'm making my family happy, then I'm doing something right. My biggest goal is to walk away from this and my, my mom, my dad, my brothers, my wife, my children, is that they would be 100% happy and pleased with how I carried myself as a person and how I competed as a fighter. Ultimately, I want to be the best that I can be. I'm Gary Russell Jr. and I am a fighter. 
Great to hear from Gary Russell Jr. You can see other autobiographies from our I Am A Fighter series on our website at show.com slash sports. Time for the fight itself. 600 amateur fights between the two of them. Worlds collide here in Southern California. Great matchup. Let's go back ringside. Morrow, Al, and Paulie. All right, BK, Gary Russell Jr. told us that despite the criticism he has received for facing limited opposition, that his career has gone exactly the way he and his team planned. He told us he wanted to get to 23 or 24 and 0 before vying for a title, and that his critics will see the benefits of his plan tonight. Trained by his father, and also trained by his father, will be his opponent tonight, fellow 26-year-old Vasily Lomachenko, who jokes that when he was born, they took him straight from the hospital to the boxing gym. He feels that the 12 hour rounds he fought against Wiley veteran Orlando Salido in his last fight superseded the experience he would have procured fighting regular level guys for two years. Now tonight, he gets a second straight crack at a championship and should he be successful, will equal the mark of Thailand Sansek Mwensurin who won a junior welterweight belt in his third pro fight in 1975. Let's go to the tail of the tape, Al. One of the key numbers I think here is the height of Lomachenko. Now he's listed as only a, 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 an inch and a half taller. He really looked like more than that at the weigh-in, but that could be a key issue uh, for Russell in this fight. And the rules for this WBO featherweight title fight, the vacant crown up for grabs, no standing eight count, no three knockdown rule. The referee or doctor can stop the fight. A fighter cannot be saved by the bell in any round. If an accidental foul or headbutt causes a fight to end within four rounds, it's a no decision. After four rounds, they will go to the scorecards for a technical decision. We are set for the vacant WBO featherweight championship bout. Let's get the official introductions from the one and only Jimmy Lennon Jr. Fina and AT&T mobilizing your world. This bow to sanction by the WBO, President Francisco Valcarcel, Supervisor Richard DeCure. Our judges scoring this bow from ringside from Villa Park, California, Max DeLuca. From Las Vegas, Nevada, Lisa Jumpa. And from La Mesa, California, Pat Russell. And our referee in charge, he'll be giving instructions after the introductions, Jack Reese. All right, fans, here we go. 12 rounds of boxing for the vacant WBO featherweight championship of the world. Introducing to you first on my right, fighting out of the red corner, wearing black trunks, hailing from Belgorod Nestrovsky in Ukraine. He weighed in at 125 and one half pounds. His professional record stands at one win, one loss, with one win coming by way of knockout. Currently ranked the WBO number four world contender. Tonight making his second attempt at a world title. Ladies and gentlemen, here is the renowned two-time Olympic gold medalist introducing Vasily Lomachenko. His opponent across the ring on my left, fighting out of the blue corner in this vacant world title attraction, wearing white trunks with gold trim, hailing from Capitol Heights, Maryland. He weighed in the same as his opponent, 125 and one half pounds. He is undefeated in his campaign to the ring with a record of 24 wins, no losses, 14 wins coming by way of knockout. Currently ranked the WBO number one world contender, and tonight making his first attempt attempt at a world title, introducing the undefeated Mr. Gary Russell Jr. Once again, a referee in charge, now to give instructions, Jack Reese. Not piece, Gary? Give not piece in? Hi. I gave you both instructions in the dress room. I want to remind you, listen and obey my commands at all times. Protect yourself at all times. Fight hard, fight clean. Good luck to both of you. Boxing purists have been salivating in anticipation of this vacant featherweight championship bout between two blue chip prospects who have gotten at this point 
taking very divergent paths. You ready? You ready? Veteran referee Jack Reese calls for the opening bell. Vasily Lomachenko in the black. Gary Russell Jr. in the white with gold trim. Russell Jr. known for maybe being one of the fastest fighters in the sport, while Lomachenko will have a size advantage, and many people believe that, technically speaking, he's just a little bit better, Al. You know, the difference is hand speed edge probably for Russell. Lomachenko, a better body puncher and a little bigger, as you point out. One thing, Russell has to be careful. He's got fast hands, but he's always throwing up punches at the same speed. It's a, it's a, it's a pattern I've noticed in his career. He's got to be careful and mix up the speed tonight because Lomachenko can get his timing. Couple of right hands to the side of the head by Gary Russell, a battle of southpaws. Lomachenko landed a very nice right to the body. He's gonna be throwing that punch a lot. In April, Golden Boy outbid top rank by a mere $2,500 to put on this fight, a million fifty-two thousand five hundred to a $1,050,000. <laughs> And because of uh, WBO rule number 13, which uh, reads, if the fight is held in the country of origin, residence, or nationality of one of the contenders, the resident contestant shall receive 40% as opponent, 60% of the total purse. So both of them making career-high purses, Lomachenko making 60%, Russell 40%. Lomachenko landed a really good right hook about 25 seconds ago or so. It'll be interesting to see as he got Russell now on the back foot as Russell tries to reestablish his jab. Just past the midpoint of the opening round, the right hook of Lomachenko, a big weapon already in this fight. You know, he's landed to the body a few seconds ago as well, out of the point. Both of them missing with shots. And he's got Russell backing up now after having landed, showing him a little bit of that power. Lomachenko leaning on the smaller Gary Russell Jr. Quick jab by Lomachenko. You can already tell, some thought this might be just a technical boxing match. Uh-uh, we can tell already, this is gonna be a, this is gonna be a firefight Russell's with got, skill. Russell's gotta mix it up, he's starting to get countered. At, uh, it's like I said, he's throwing okay, everything okay. at the same speed. You cannot do that with a guy of the pedigree of Lomachenko. You gotta mix in feints in there, you gotta mix the speed. Good body Beautiful shot by Lomachenko. Three punch combination by Lomachenko. <laughs> Left hand to the body. Left hand upstairs by Russell to counter Lomachenko's body attack. Right hook by Lomachenko. And then the jab through the guard. Russell pairing the jab. Final 10 seconds of the opening round. And again, Lomachenko catches Russell with a right hook to the chin. Great round for Vasily Lomachenko. Lomachenko landing combinations very effectively. The straight left throws to the right. He is pushing Gary Russell back and setting the pace. As for Gary Russell, what does he need to do uh, in this match? Well, he's got to win the battle of the jabs. Didn't necessarily do that. We have not seen many combinations yet from him. And he can't throw wide hooks where he will get countered by Lomachenko. As for Lomachenko, guess what? Does this look familiar? Yes, I think he needs to win the battle of the jab. He has already set the pace, not allowing Russell to fight at his own pace. And has he gone downstairs? Yes, with some very good body punches. The bell and round at number two, Lomachenko, a natural right-hander, but when he first started, his father put him in the left-handed stance, and he's been a southpaw stylist ever since. Meanwhile, for Gary Russell, as he pops the piston-like jab, he has faced three southpaws in his nine most recent fights. Lomachenko faced two lefties, both under the World Series of Boxing banner. Russell getting busier with the jab early in this round, and that's important for him. That's what you want to see from Russell. You want to need, he needs to answer back a little bit. Russell parries the jab, misses with a jab of his own. Leaning in, 
Lomachenko goes to the body. There's a jab and a left hand to the body by Lomachenko. A good catch and shoot by Russell there. He came back with his own right hook to the top. The pressure of Lomachenko in this fight, and he's been continual with it in this first round that they have. How much of an impact will it have as this fight goes on against Russell? Russell blocks that right hook by Lomachenko. High guard by Russell, doing a good job of blocking those shots by Lomachenko, who continues to be the aggressor. Lomachenko almost 400 amateur fights, 396 and one record. <laughs> Essentially better than most pros are, and that's why he's fighting for a world championship in just his third pro fight. And against Salido in that second pro fight, official pro fight, he faced everything. Salido was about 20 pounds bigger than him. Uh, Salido fought, obviously, outside the rules, so he faced a lot. That quick start in this round for Gary Russell has evaporated a little bit, and Lomachenko is starting to find his rhythm in this round. We mentioned the fact that Vasily Lomachenko has also toiled for the World Series of Boxing, which he was paid for, and there's been some uh, dispute, some feeling that he should be 7-1 and one with the World Series of Boxing fights on his record, but officially, for this fight, he is one and one, and looking again to equal that mark. His comments are that, you know, I fought all amateurs, so that makes me feel they were amateur fights. No, that's his viewpoint. Either way, he is far advanced, and that was a beautiful right hook to the body. And by to be Lomachenko. fair to him, I, I heard that World Series of Boxing fighters were told that the their fights would not go yeah. on their professional records, despite the fact they were remunerated. But nonetheless, he's still the best fighter guy Russell has fought in his career. By far, yeah. And we're seeing evidence of that here. Leo Santa Cruz in the house, one of the more fan-friendly fighters in boxing, the super bantamweight champion. Looking forward to seeing him back in action. He's out with his family tonight. Everything's good. Enjoying the action with his little girl. And Everything. Don't go to the body, go ahead. <laughs> move in, move out, move in, move out. Third round begins. Again, Lomachenko, a double Olympic gold medalist, winning in consecutive Olympics in 2008 and 2012. Uh, three boxers won gold in three Olympics. Cuba's Teofilo Stevenson and Felix Savon and Hungary's Laszlo Papp, the only three to win three Olympic gold medals. Not bad, Al. No, that isn't too bad. These two fighters threw a lot of punches in round two. 97 for Russell and 105 for Lomachenko, so they're throwing. Rapid fire jabs from Russell, backing up Lomachenko. First time in the fight, Russell has moved forward to try and back Lomachenko up. Good body attack by Russell. First couple of rounds, look, Russell got off to quick starts and then it was evened yeah. up by Lomachenko. I want to see if he can consistently fight the whole three minutes. It's a really good point. Having Lomachenko respect him. And he starts to back up again. Let's yeah, see what happens that's, a, that's a great point, Paul. Among active fighters, China's Zhu Ximing, a flyweight, also won Olympic gold twice. He's 4-0 oh as a pro, and in this fight now, we thought we'd see the battle of the jabs. There's a couple of jabs from Lomachenko. Quick exchange, and Lomachenko with a stiff jab through the guard of Russell. He also landed a sharp left uppercut and a counter to Russell's jab. Well, it's exactly what Pauly said. You know, now we're halfway through the round, and Lomachenko's starting to, again, start to put the pressure on. It's almost like Lomachenko feels him out the first minute, and then decides to get his timing on him. Let's see if Russell can maintain the advantage here this round. So he's starting to land the hook there, Lomachenko, and he's got Russell up against the ropes. Goes downstairs with a body shot, does Lomachenko. 
His dad told him, don't go to the body so much, but that's there, and he wants to throw and those he's punches. very effective yeah. with his body work, as we've seen throughout the amateur career, and, and thus far in his pro career, he hurt Orlando Salido in that 12th and final round. Yeah, very much so, almost put him down. A minute left in the third. Again, Russell has a nice stiff jab, but he's got to start mixing the speed on it because it's only a matter of time before Lomachenko may start to time it over the top of the left hand. And I think that was a shot over the top right there, followed by right hook. You and see the yeah, oh, go ahead, no, no, go ahead, see sir. the edge, 10 to 2 for Lomachenko, and those stop, are stop, solid stop, body stop. punches. And that's the right move for Lomachenko, correct, like Paulie? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Final 30 seconds of the third. Straight left down the middle by Lomachenko. Utilizing his footwork, now backing Russell up. Final 10 seconds of the third round. All right, let's go to Steve Harwood with this permanent statistic. Well, Mo, Vasily Lomachenko has had two pro bouts, one and one, with an asterisk. And the reason this fight is so interesting is because should he win it, he would tie the all-time record of Sainzak Moink Serene for the fastest path to a championship, to a world title. Moink Serene from Thailand was a Muay Thai kickboxer. He turned pro, and in only his third fight, he won the WBC Super Lightweight title back in 1975. Moink Serene... The record holder here, Jeff Fennick, who is a Triple Crown champion. Leon Spinks, of course, beat Muhammad Ali to win the title in only his eighth fight. Like Lomachenko, by the way, Leon Spinks, an Olympic gold medalist. And Guillermo Rigondeau doing it most recently. He was also a tremendous, tremendous amateur. So Lomachenko looking to tie the record, if you don't count those World Series of Boxing bouts, with Sensak Moeng Serene, fastest to the title. Getting a second consecutive crack at a championship is Vasily Lomachenko, who gets backed up following the piston-like jab of Gary Russell Jr. as we begin round number four. Great report by Steve, and that, it's fascinating to see that and to see the fighters that got there so quickly. And this young man, he is Lomachenko. He is a solid fighter. Now these rounds, while to my eye, Lomachenko's doing very well, the third round was a very close round. And Russell's gonna need, I think, to kind of pick up the pace here. He's, yeah. he's trying, man. Yeah. And lightning quick hand speed of Gary Russell on display. And while aesthetically pleasing, uh, Lomachenko, good job of blocking them. And Lomachenko has the more thudding blows, Paul. Yeah. More power. Yeah, he seems to land a little bit more oomph, so to speak. And again, a reminder that each round starts out the same with Russell throwing more and being a little more effective and then Lomachenko coming back. So we'll see if that's the pattern. Of course, the American crowd rallying Gary Russell Jr. with chance of USA. Russell hasn't lost for six years. That was in the 2007 World Championships where he won a bronze medal. So he's not used to losing as Lomachenko isn't. Another stiff jab through the guard by Lomachenko as they clinch. At the midway point of round number four, let's take a look at the show stats for total punches. Wow, uh, Larry, Gary Russell very low with that 12% according to show stats and Lomachenko. Obviously more though throwing not, uh, landing more though for not throwing as many. This is a, a fight being fought at a very good skill level, which is what we expect from these two men. At the 2006 National PAL Tournament, Gary Russell fractured both of his hands in the first fight, yet showcased his steely resolve and ended up winning all four fights and the gold medal. But Al, he's also had hand issues during points of his professional career as he attacks the body of Vasily Lomachenko. Yeah, hairline fracture uh, in his fight against Gusev a couple years ago, and it, it it's a recurring issue. We asked him at the fight, how are your hands? He said, well, they're as good as they can be. You know, and this is a fighter, like many others, who just expects the hand issues. We'll see if it rears its uh, head tonight. Under 30 seconds left in the fourth round. Go, 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 go. 
Final 10 seconds of the fourth frame. Lomachenko going to the body before attempting to go upstairs. A close round here. Earlier, we saw Mauricio Herrera in attendance. Now we'll take a look at his opponent coming up on July 12th on Showtime pay-per-view, Johan Perez, who, as we mentioned earlier, handed our main event participant, Yoshihiro Kamigai, his lone professional loss right here at the Stub Hub Center last June. That was on Showbox. Uh, it was an upset, as we've seen so many on Showbox. And by the way, Showbox heading toward its 200th episode in July. Great, great series. Our friend Steve Farwood, of course, along with Barry Tompkins, and Raul Marquez on that, and Gordon Hall, the executive producer of it. They've done a great job with that series. Last couple of rounds, although close, it seems like Russell has been able to find some better moments to dictate a bit more often. In uh, May, his uh, younger brother, Gary Antoine, won the National Golden Gloves Championship in Las Vegas. The Russell family has produced four sons who have won National Golden Gloves titles. Unprecedented, and of course now, Gary Russell as he ate that overhand left from uh, Lomachenko, winning to win gold in the professional ranks. That's, that's uh, some uh, heredity there, isn't it? <laughs> well, their father was a professional yeah. fighter as well, whose career was ruined uh, due to a hunting accident. <laughs> by the way, just like George Foreman. Good hook by Lomachenko. Gary Russell Sr.'s name those kids Gary as well. Yeah. And yeah, great hook by Lomachenko, but a nice counter right hand from Russell. The difference that Russell's facing here, not just the level of Lomachenko compared to the fighters he's fought, he's facing a fighter who boxes, he moves, he's not just coming straight forward like so many of the people he fought uh, before this. You know, Russell had, had some better success in the last couple of rounds, but this round he didn't even get off to a good start. At least even in the rounds that I had him losing, he had gotten off to a pretty decent start. So far, this round has been all Vasily Lomachenko. Counter right hand and the left hand to the body by Lomachenko. That body work, I guarantee, is going to pay dividends as we head forward. And a, a point, Gary Russell has never been 12 rounds, and we know Lomachenko just went 12 against Salido in 12 tough rounds. This has been one of the best rounds of the fight for Lomachenko because he is really ripping to both the body and the head. And while Russell is popping out that piston-like jab, he gets countered effectively by Lomachenko with the, the right hand, and there's an overhand left clubbing blow by Lomachenko. The cleanest offense of the fight being landed by Lomachenko this round. He's really landed some solid shots this round. And now working the body before going upstairs. And it's all Vasily Lomachenko as Russell shells up before countering with the right hook. Good patience shown by Russell. He's trying to he's trying to catch and shoot. Is Lomachenko switching the angles quickly? And Lomachenko, though, when he pulls out, keeping his hands up so he doesn't get hit. Yep. And he continues to work the body with his left hand. Does Vasily Lomachenko? The most dominant round for either fighter this round so far. As we head into the final 15 seconds of the fifth. Lomachenko's body work has been exquisite in this frame. Final 10 seconds. And he continues to go upstairs now, working the jab. A great round for Lomachenko. In what was a fantastic round for Vasily Lomachenko, he would land this good straight left hand against 
Russell. And then later on, as the round continued, after doing great work to the body and the head, he rips that right hook after a straight left hand. And Lomachenko showing a great uh, arsenal. And you see there, he is keeping his hands up as he pulls out so Russell can't do the catch and shoot, which Paulie pointed out. Cognizant of that, exactly. Yeah. Making the adjustment. <laughs> Russell came out an aggressive stance here this round. Let's see if he tries to get off to that quick start again. In the last round, Lomachenko, according to show stats, landed 23 punches to only three by Russell. We are into round number six. Russell flashing the jab, going to the body with the right hand before Lomachenko pivots and goes and resets back to the center of the ring before being backed up by Russell. You know, we see a lot of activity from Russell early in the, the round every time, but it's not as if a lot is landing when he's mm -hmm. throwing all these punches. Yeah, Lomachenko doing a good job of switching range and changing yeah. the distance. And his father told him to do that. Yeah, a lot of speed on display by Russell, but not effective. As we look at uh, more show stats here, power punches landed round by round, Al. Yeah, and that giant edge in round five. And you can make a case for an even bigger edge, honestly, for Lomachenko. He has landed mo a lot of power punches. <laughs> Left hand of the body by Russell. Lomachenko ducks underneath the right hook. Russell doing a good job of forcing the pace here this round. Even if he's not landing anything so cleanly, yeah. it's keeping Lomachenko on the back foot. It's the left hand of the body again by Lomachenko. Russell working the body, but again, not a lot behind those punches. And he's not, he's just not landing cleanly. Now in this round, Lomachenko hasn't landed much cleanly, but- Oh, there's a stiff jab. jab. Separate. Well, we talked about the big ring in the first fight and how Devin Alexander, Lomachenko, also a fan what of using the ring when he needs to. Final 60 seconds of the sixth round. Russell coming in as they clinch. The bigger Lomachenko pushing him off. Here's the irony. Lomachenko with much, many fewer professional fights, and yet Russell looks like the amateur style and Lomachenko looks like a pro, correct, Paulie? And a lot of times in spots. It's, 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 it's Lomachenko stepping in harder with the shots while Russell yes. trying to throw the little combinations. Come on, fight out of it. There you go. Veteran referee Jack Reese letting them ply their trade. Under 30 seconds left in the sixth. Lomachenko utilizing his footwork. There's a stiff counter left hand of the body by Lomachenko. Russell avoids that overhand left. Russell works the body. Changing levels, final five seconds. We're halfway through this championship bout. Still to come here, live from the StubHub Center on Showtime Championship Boxing, our own Brian Kenny will be joined by none other than the golden boy himself, Oscar De La Hoya, and the man who will face Erislandi Lara live on pay-per-view Saturday, July the 12th. Canelo Alvarez, we're giving you well, a twofer coming up with Brian Kenny <laughs> later on tonight. A couple of handsome guys. Uh, well, O'Brien's pretty good looking up there, too. That's going to be three. <laughs> Another gorgeous night here in Southern California as summer has arrived. Of course, now living here in California, I yes. can tell all you guys it's summer every day here. It is. Your favorite the uh, Oh, I love this here. venue. Yeah. And man, has it produced many memorable fights. A couple of months ago, we saw Lucas Matisse and John Molina, the leading candidate for fight of the year. And now we are seeing potential history being equaled as Vasily Lomachenko attempts to win a championship in just his third professional bout with an asterisk, while the undefeated Gary Russell Jr. wants to prove that his steady and, uh, well, rather slow rise up the pro ranks would benefit him as he wants to win that vacant crown. Russell has been so much more active in the last couple of rounds, throwing a lot of punches. Whether they're all getting in remains to be seen, but he's oh. doing some good work. Yeah, the right hook connected by Lomachenko. I think keeping Lomachenko on the back foot, he's less, he's less dangerous. 
Why, Paul, why do you think Lomachenko stopped attacking? Well, I think it's because Russell's doing a good job of getting off first. So I, I think Lomachenko's thinking, he's got Lomachenko thinking a bit too much on defense. Yeah. And he doesn't get, get a chance to get off the punches he wants to. All right, Steve Farhood, uh, let's uh, take a look at how you have unofficially scored this fight at the midpoint. Well, Ma, it's hard to find rounds for Russell. When he's been the aggressor, he has not been the effective aggressor. Lomachenko, ironically, the ultimate amateur, and he's doing it with body punching, which doesn't even count in the Stop. amateur game. It's all Lomachenko. Step each other. Step out. Box. And again, when Russell doesn't get off first, it allows Lomachenko to get off on the, be on the front foot and step on the gas a little bit. A lot of times, Russell's offense may not have a lot on it, but the fact that he can keep Lomachenko busy, it keeps Lomachenko from getting off those power shots. Yeah, that's absolutely true. Under 90 seconds left in the seventh round. See, now Russell not getting off. Kind of backing himself up, and it's Lomachenko. And a good right hook. Yeah, good right hook. Upstairs by Lomachenko. And the jab of Lomachenko hasn't been quite as effective in the last couple rounds as it was earlier. Under a minute remaining in the seventh. And see again, a lot of punches being thrown by Russell, but none of them connected. The Meanwhile, problem. it's Lomachenko who attacks the body furiously. That would be effective if Lomachenko wasn't coming back to land his own hard shots back. Yeah, very and good. there's a counter left hand right over the top of the jab, as I said before. Russell's got to change the speed on that jab. Both of them attacking the body now. Lomachenko going upstairs with that left uppercut. Action picking up here now, under 30 seconds left. Those are murderous body punches by Lomachenko. And I love the way Lomachenko changes the angle inside. He, and he, he likes gets, to throw that lead uppercut. He gets inside, he steps around, he gets underneath the arms. He's never standing still, even if he's working in the pocket. Final 10 seconds of the seventh round between Vasily Lomachenko and Gary Russell Jr. Lomachenko, especially in the latter part of that round, getting Russell on the ropes and throwing with conviction. Now, those are kind of combos that didn't have as much on them as some of the body punch. But later on there, I watched him rip those body punches. And Paulie, he is really uh, throwing those with conviction. Yep, he's throwing them with conviction. And you see how he's stepping around afterwards. He's also forcing Russell to move out of there as he's making, it's clearly making Russell uncomfortable as he's trying to get off that space. Gary, no me. No me. Stay back. Round eight underway. Earlier we saw Leo Santa Cruz in attendance. Gary Russell Jr. holds an amateur win over the aforementioned Leo Santa Cruz as these two highly touted amateurs now meeting in the pro ranks. <laughs> mentioned earlier that Russell has never gone 12 rounds and we're heading into those rounds where we'll see if that body work by Lomachenko starts to affect him. Both of them, oh the stiff jab there from Lomachenko. Both of them scheduled to compete at the 2008 U.S. Olympics. Of course, Lomachenko winning the first of his two Olympic gold medals. Russell, as we mentioned, was a medal favorite, unable to make weight, did not compete. But there have been some uh, matchups over the years between fighters who competed in the same Olympics. Chris Bird, David Tua in the 92 Olympics, Lennox Lewis, Evander Holyfield in the 84 Olympics, and Miguel Cotto and Mohamed Abdulayev, who both competed in the 2000 Olympics. In fact, Abdulea beat Cotto in the Olympics, lost to him as a pro. And of course, these two men were in different weight classes. Right. And yeah, Gary Russell said, you know, I didn't even know who Lomachenko was until two months ago. Hard to believe he didn't know who he was at the 2008 Olympics. Yeah, I don't know if I believe that either. And he knows him now, that's yeah. for sure. 
And we talk about, you know, the, the scoring criteria, clean effect of punching. Russell throwing a lot of punches, Paulie, but thus far connecting on less than 10%. Yeah, and, and it, clearly the harder punch is being landed by Lomachenko. The thing is, even if he's not throwing as hard, whenever he does get off first, it at least allows him to keep Lomachenko from working. But now, as he's getting more tired, and maybe like Al said, the body punching will take effect late in the fight, Russell's having a harder time getting off first, and Lomachenko's able to back him up and really keep him standing still enough to land some really powerful shots at times. Body work there by Russell. Lomachenko walking him down. Russell pivots away back to the center of the ring. That was a nice move by Russell. He and changed was, the look and he got off the ropes. But he's got to nice, be more uh, consistent. Yeah, right hook by Lomachenko. Now, that's an interesting round because Russell's thrown over 30 more punches than Lomachenko. And we'll see if that's enough to win him the round. I don't know. And Russell landing a couple of good shots. You just don't land as cleanly as, right. as Lomachenko does. I haven't seen Lomachenko's head really snap back or fight where I say, wow, good shot by Russell, you know? We are through eight rounds of the Stuff Up Center. <laughs> Look. There's the 10th, the 11th, and 12th round left. You understand? You got to do something. Underway, Vasily Lomachenko, a native of the Ukraine, but trains at CMC Boxing Gym in Marina del Rey, California. Of course, the most famous Ukrainian boxers, the Klitschko brothers. Meanwhile, there are 13, currently 13 American champions. If you count heavyweight title holder Berman Stiburn, who was living in Las Vegas and in the process of becoming a naturalized U.S. citizen, Polly, what does Gary Russell Jr. need to do in these last few rounds if he wants to become number 14? He's going to have to. Again, make a better attempt at getting off first. And here he's, he starts a lot of these rounds good. You know, he starts a lot of these rounds backing up Lomachenko. And again, even if it's not landing greatly, it's at least allowing him to not let Lomachenko get his hands off. But again, he loses the consistency as the round progresses. Our unofficial score at ringside is Mr. Boxypedia Steve Farhood. And through eight rounds, he has a Lomachenko ahead by four points. That makes sense, and certainly Lomachenko has imposed his will in more rounds than Russell, it would seem to us in any case. Counter right hook by Lomachenko. I wonder if Lomachenko wants Russell at the first part of the round to throw all those punches, Paulie, and then absolutely counts on coming back. It's almost like he's letting him letting himself get the timing down on the, on, on the speed of Russell's shots. And then he can start timing the offense. And you see right there, he's starting to tackle him, where invariably then he goes to the body and starts landing power punches. Left hand to the body by Lomachenko. And he's, and he's made the adjustment to Russell's catch and shoot with the right hook as he now gets underneath it when he throws that body shot. And again, a lot of those punches being caught by Lomachenko's gloves or arms by Gary Russell Jr. Final minute of the night. I think one of the things that's giving Russell problems is the movement of Lomachenko. He's not seen this from the, the fighters he's faced as a pro, not even anything close. Yeah, the ability, Lomachenko's ability to change range, and he has yeah. the ring where he is able to use that, that space in there. And it's bothered Russell a lot. Oh, that was a 
Trip by Lomachenko, ruled it. not a knockdown by referee Jack Reese. He was quick. so. Yeah, he was quick to work Jack Reese to make sure that wasn't called a knockdown. We've seen Paulie do that occasionally. <laughs> doesn't always work, though. No, no, it doesn't. Final 10 seconds of the ninth. Good exchange to end the round. Still to come, our feature attraction, the return of the ghost, Robert Guerrero, who is sitting pensively, contemplating, I'm sure, visualizing what is to come in the main event. Last time we saw him was over a year ago in the biggest fight of his life against Floyd Money Mayweather, made a career high payday of $3 million. Took the rest of the year off, had some promotional issues, but he says he has recharged his batteries and ready to remain at the elite level of the welterweight division. Meanwhile, Yoshihiro Kamagai facing the ghost, and now he wants to exercise the demon of his last appearance here at the Stump Up Center, in which he suffered his lone professional loss. That against Perez, who we saw earlier, and we're going to see Perez uh, on July 12th against Herrera, and yeah, he, he hopes that his hell-bent for leather style will get to Guerrero. He does have some pop in his punches, the welterweight from Japan getting set to meet Robert Guerrero. That's in our main event. Right now, we begin round 10 of this 12-round championship affair for the vacant WBO featherweight belt. Now, informationally, Russell has thrown an average of almost 20 punches more per round, but the question is, has he landed effectively enough to win some of those rounds, or how many? There he lands a shot to the body. This is what Russell needs to do. You see, when he backs yep. up Lomachenko like this, it keeps Lomachenko off balance enough to not be able to get off the kind of offense he wants to get off. That was a left by Lomachenko. His left hand has not been as effective in the last three or four rounds as it was earlier. Lomachenko walking Russell down. Russell coming forward, but again, throwing punches. And while they managed to land, Good They're smother. not exactly hurting Lomachenko. They're not in good smother there by Russell. But it seems like a lot of times when he is missing, you know, he's getting tired. He backs himself up to the ropes. A good smother by Russell there. Oh, getting that rest he needs and keeping Lomachenko from getting off. Yeah, that's, that's, that's a good tactic for him in, at this point in the fight. Oh, again, a counter. Right hawk upstairs by Lomachenko that was oh. effective and some good body work by the Ukrainian fighter. And there's Russell showing off his speed and going upstairs. That right hook though lands and there's some swelling around the left eye of Russell courtesy of those hooks. Stiff jab from Lomachenko. It seems like a lot of times Russell's shots are just arm punches. Mm -hmm. Another body shot by Lomachenko. Good body shots by Vasily Lomachenko there. I Under a minute left in the round. I think he's starting to slow Russell down a bit with the body punches and some of those that work on the inside. You know, there's been moments where Russell seems to slow down, and then he next round he comes right back. So it's hard to tell at this point in the fight. But Vasily Lomachenko is having himself a really good round. Again, the counter right hook by Lomachenko backs Russell up. And again, it's been a round where Russell seemed to have started it pretty well, and Lomachenko's gotten the timing down as we, were, as we went along. Another right hook to the chin by Lomachenko. Russell's got to watch himself. He's getting to the point where he's, he's starting to look a little bit more fatigued. Oh, no shots there was start a massive right hand by Lomachenko as we are headed to the championship rounds. Look at me. Why are you slipping me and not putting the body shot? 
please answer that. Well, punctuating what was a very good round for him, Vasily Lomachenko is able to land this right hook. That was almost a straight right hand and pushed Gary Russell back. Here it would come again. You see another look at it. And Gary Russell thrown backwards and uh, good counterpunch by Lomachenko. 11. So into the championship rounds, the vacant WBO featherweight title up for grabs. Neither of these two amateur standouts have been knocked down in their respective professional careers. Lomachenko came into this fight a slight favorite at about seven to five, and uh, he's living up to that so far. Double jab by Lomachenko. Now, in many of these rounds, as I pointed out, Russell's been active. It, I can't imagine too many rounds are being scored for Russell, but we don't know. I mean, Russell trying to be aggressive here, but he's not getting all too many, and it's many shots. And if he doesn't, Lomachenko does get off. And the problem is when Lomachenko gets off first, he's more accurate than Russell. He lands. Right. There's Russell crowding Lomachenko. Lomachenko able to move out of the way before they clinch. Jack Reese allowing them to fight out of the clinch. To show you what a big jump up it's been, the last opponent that Russell fought, Miguel Tamayo, was 15-7-2, and two, had lost three of his last fights before the fight, and had been knocked down five times. This is a whole different kettle of fish. And he took the fight on three days' notice. I worked that fight. Oh, very good point. Okay. Oh, beautiful. Left hand of the body, that followed by the left uppercut on the inside by Lomachenko. There's that left uppercut again. Again, it's like we said earlier, Al, the body work may have slowed Russell down, and we're at that point in the fight now where the body work starts to, take, to, starts to pay those dividends. Efficient jab by Lomachenko, strafing the body now of Russell with those shots. Russell's body language clearly a bit, bit more uncomfortable these last couple of rounds. Now and a right oh. hook connects by Lomachenko. A good round here nice in round number 11. And again, Russell with the counter, but Lomachenko's defense, Paulie, the footwork, the distance, the range, able to avoid the, oh. the brunt of the attack. And these body shots are starting to land clean now, guys. Before they were landing on the arms, sometimes it would land clean, but they are starting to land underneath the arms now because Russell's offense is slowing down, so Lomachenko can get underneath while Russell's throwing. And Russell in a place, a territory in round 11 he's never been before. Yeah, Russell hitting nothing but air with these shots while Lomachenko efficient, economical, but landing effectively. And trust me, when you're tired, the worst thing you want to do is miss because you, you will pick your spots to get off your punches and you want them to count. You hope they count because you're fatigued. So when you miss, it's all the worst feeling. of the 11th round exchange on the inside we're going to the 12th and final round of this championship affair not a bad one in one pro fighter huh, guys? That's it. Good, job, good, job, good, good job good job is everything okay do you remember what to do? We need to repeat the attack. Repeat the attack. Man, this is your fight to win or lose, son. I'm telling you what the fuck to do. Son, go up there when you get out for a combination. Boom, boom, boom. Don't take off after that combination. You set the third level right behind you. Keep your head on start the third level. The crowd appreciating uh, the efforts that they have seen here tonight again. Two of here. the best amateur fighters of the previous decade. Many herald Vasily Lomachenko is maybe the best amateur fighter ever. And right now, perhaps on the verge of equaling the mark of the fastest path to a championship out. And we heard frustration in the corner of Gary Russell from his father. 
and a very opposite uh, tenor in the other corner for Vasily Lomachenko and his dad. Lomachenko getting on the inside, firing off the combination. They also so credit though, he's still trying, man. Yes, he is. Outgunned, but he's still trying. He's still coming forward trying to make this fight here in the last round. And I'm sure he understands that he is likely so far behind in this fight that he would need something dramatic, knockdowns or a knockout to win. Jack Reese. Warning Russell to keep the, the shots above the belt line. It has been a, a clean fight. But now things may be falling apart mentally for Gary Russell Jr. Two new really low, low blows there. Oh, the frustration mm -hmm. probably kicking in too. Yeah. And also he just might be tired, he can't get the punches yeah. off. Good point. Left Agassi building up as Russell goes to the body, countered by Lomachenko, leaning in, and Russell firing off that left hand to the liver. Now Russell with a right, countered with an effective right hook by Lomachenko upstairs. And in his last fight against Salido, a fight in which he had, uh, had suffered in many yeah. rounds, Lomachenko uh, was able to close the show very strongly. So he's used to this as a pro already from his other fight. Lomachenko's manager quipped, the only thing they learned in the Salido fight was how to throw low blows. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Under a minute now left in the fight. And Lomachenko closing quickly in this oh, fight. Russell walked into a short shot there. And again, Russell leans in and gets tagged by Vasily Lomachenko. You know, we've, we've praised, praised, praised Lomachenko a lot, and he's probably winning the fight, but you know, we can't go easy on Russell either. He's, he's got shown you. some real guts, some character, yeah. Heart. And, and displayed skill throughout. Just because Lomachenko might be a better fighter doesn't make Russell a, a, a bad fighter. No. Came in undefeated in 24 fights. Say what you will about his level of opponents. Was an amateur champion at 16, but now Lomachenko in the final 15 seconds. Unloading on Russell. Russell misses with the right hook. But they're both swinging. It's Lomachenko imposing his will and skill on Gary Russell Jr. Terrific performance for Lomachenko. They certainly believe that history has been equaled here tonight, Al Bernstein. It was a, a very consistent and excellent effort by Lomachenko. And at the end of the day, Gary Russell, who had not seen anything like this as a pro, and of course he's very disappointed now, assuming he may lose this fight. He just had not seen anything like Lomachenko, and the fighters he fought didn't prepare him. What was the biggest difference in the fight, Paulie? I know, I think a lot of that, what Al said, resonates, man. You know, R Russell had not seen this kind of quality in his professional career. Regardless of it being Lomachenko's third pro fight, he had seen a lot of Gary Russell's in the amateurs. And a look at the numbers. Uh, Russell busier, of course, but uh, landing at much less a percentage. And so many body punches adding to that power total that uh, Lomachenko has. And we'll go uh, inside the ropes to give you in microcosm what this fight was about. And what it was about was a varied attack from Lomachenko using combinations like this, straight left hands. And the straight left was an important weapon for him, but also there was the body work. He landed downstairs so effectively early in the fight, right hooks. You see the variety of what he's doing and throws in the uppercut as well. He was physically stronger than Gary Russell and was able to land better shots and more of them. Here's an interesting stat, Polly. Gary Russell Jr. never landed 10 or more punches in any round, well, I'll according to show stats. Well, I'll tell you this. In the last 24 fights for both of them, who's fought the better opposition? We, know, we talk about Russell's record being 24-0, and he was the pro for a longer time, but did he really fight better opposition than Lomachenko, considering Lomachenko's amateur record? Yep. And Orlando Salido being a wily veteran with over 50 fights, a champion in his own right, who lost the belt on the scales. And, and speaking of the stat we just mentioned, Al, let's take a look at the punches landed round by round, and, and there's the totals. Yeah, and this is, you know, the, the show stats, what it demonstrates here is 
how those rounds generally went. And we can see that Lomachenko, over the course of this fight, in more rounds, was able to do better work. All right, so the decision has been rendered. Let's now make it official. Let's go to the man himself, Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, after 12 rounds of action, we have a majority decision. Here are the score totals. Judge of ringside Lisa Jampa scores about 114 to 114, even a draw. Overruled by judges Max DeLuca and Pat Russell, they both scored about 116 to 112 in favor of the winner. And now the WBO featherweight champion of the world, Vasily Lomachenko. I don't know if I agree with the majority decision, but Vasily Lomachenko has done it. He has equaled the mark of Thailand Sansek Mwangsarin winning a, who won a junior welterweight title in his third pro fight in 1975 here in 2014. Lomachenko has done it. He went all in in his pro career and it's now more fruit. An unprecedented thing as you pointed out and he gets it to the quickest point for a world title and the only thing marring it was the absolutely absurd scorecard of 114 was, was lisa jampa sitting with near brian tonight man or was she sitting it really inside? is a disgusting broken record though isn't it guys well that's, that's a shame every hey, maybe fight. she was far away that you know and they didn't give her binoculars but let's not take away from what we just witnessed vasily lomachenko is a champion let's go to jim gray all right mo thank you very much agus Klimas will translate for us Congratulations to you, Vasily. What does it mean to him to become the fastest to win a title? Поздравляем тебя. И что для тебя значит так быстро выиграть титул чемпиона мира? Ну, насколько я знаю, я современный рекордсмен мира, и мне это очень приятно. Я повторил успех. Таиландец, да, по-моему, выиграл с третьего боя. Я повторил успех. Для меня это большое удовлетворение. Хотел бы сказать огромное спасибо всем болельщикам, которые приехали с Украины поддержать меня и своей команде. Спасибо огромное. Uh, it's, I'm very, very happy. I'm very excited to be a world champion. I just uh, repeated the guy from Thailand who won in his third fight uh, became a champion. I just wanted to thank to all the fans came here to support me, all the people came from Ukraine, and uh, I wanted to thank my team to help me to prepare for this fight. And what will it mean to the folks back home in Ukraine to be able to join the Klitschko's as a champion? Что для для твоих фанов на Украине будет выиграть твой выигрыш боя этого? Я не знаю, я не знаю, истинные истинные любители бокса, истинные болельщики, наверное, искренне радуются за меня. Им огромное спасибо за это. I don't know what you know, what they're thinking and what in their mind, but I think they're enjoying, and I wanted to thank them. How are you able to dominate this fight? Как вышло, что этот провести вот этот бой выиграть? Ну, в принципе, та стратегия, которая была поставлена, я ее полностью практически выполнил, за исключением некоторых моментов. И хотел бы отдать должное Гэри Расселу, он достойный боксер. I just uh, working by the plan was built by our team and uh, I was just working hard and I tried to punch as many punches. Did you feel as though going to his body would be the most effective way to weaken him because you continually went to the body? Ты думал, что работая в корпус это будет самый лучший вариант для тебя? Ну, с помощью этого я и попадал чистый удар в голову. Я начинал с живота, когда он опускал руки, я проводил атаки по голове. I think I landed a pretty good punches in the head as well. I started, I started from the body and then went to the head. Congratulations to you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Gary? Thank you. What's going on, baby? It's got to be a difficult moment for you to lose your first pro fight and the first time in six years. How tough is this? I mean, it's, it's definitely, you know, a little disappointing. But it's all good. We're gladiators. We're warriors. Um, we got to go back to the drawing board. You threw 209 more punches, but you only landed 10% of your punches here this evening. And you seemed to start most of the rounds pretty quick, but couldn't seem to get on track with the rhythm. What, what happened there? Um, he had real good lateral movement. You know, uh, we tried to close the, uh, close the distance with the jab. He was moving really good, you know. Um, I take my hat off to him. 
Gary, you had 24 pro fights, and by all accounts, it just wasn't a great competition. Did that hurt you now tonight by not having somebody, better opponents that could have helped you have the experience against a guy like Vasilis? Not at all, not at all, man. Um, we got to go back to the drawing board. We honestly did. I feel as though I didn't execute the game plan the, to the T, the way that we worked on it in the gym. You know, that's a little bit my fault. Like I said, we got to go back to the drawing board. Was he better than you in terms of what you had thought coming into this fight? Honestly, no. You know, uh, he was exactly what I what we seen in all the tapes. We figured that he was going to use a lot of lateral movement. You know, uh, we knew he was going to throw a lot of uh, straight left hands down the middle. We just, I honestly just didn't execute the game plan the way that we supposed to have done it. And what was that supposed to be? Um, we wanted to, to, to close the distance with the double and triple jabs. Get close between two and three jabs, touch the body and come upstairs. We wanted to slow him down early in the fight by going uh, to the body. And I couldn't get to him as, as easy as I thought I would be able to. Okay, we appreciate the time. We look forward to your next fight. Most definitely. All right. All right, let's go back now to Mo. Thank you very much, Jim, and we'll bring in Steve Farhood to uh, take a look at the official scoring of this fight. I'm sure you uh, raised a quizzical eyebrow as well, Steve, when you heard the announcement. I sure did, Mo. Lisa Giampa, that's the score that sticks out. She gave four of the, the first four rounds of the fight to Gary Russell and five of the first six. That's funny, because I gave five of the first six to Lomachenko. So that's why Lisa Giampa had it even to Luca and Russell, obviously, eight, four in rounds. Closer to my score, I had a nine, three. And to me, it really wasn't that hard a fight to score. Lomachenko's body work was dominant throughout the fight. All right, Steve, thank you very much. And uh, Brian, with all of the political turmoil going on in the Ukraine, the citizens can take a moment and celebrate history here tonight as Vasily Lomachenko may just be the best two-in-one pro fighter I've ever seen. He is the new WBO featherweight champion. Amor, you're right. I mean, this guy's a national treasure. We talked about him being one of the greatest amateurs in the history of boxing. And I don't think anybody's stock is going down. I, I, I don't think it's absurd to have that fight a draw. I don't agree with it, but I don't think it's crazy. It's classy stuff, fast, no clinching. And in the rounds where he got hurt, Russell came back firing. Uh, I'm impressed by him, but Lomachenko, no shock. Vasily Lomachenko is a great fighter, and he's on to a great pro career. Still to come, our main event, Robert Guerrero versus Yoshi.